Good evening and welcome. The scripture encourages us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And while we cannot gather physically, we are glad that you have gathered virtually tonight. And we are going to worship our Lord and Savior singing some old hymns. Would you join as we sing? I have found a precious resting place in the shelter of redeeming grace. Here with joy I see my Savior's face under the atoning blood. Under the atoning blood of the Lamb. Under the atoning blood of the Lamb. Safely I am hiding, constantly abiding. Christ begin, God the heavy burden of my sin, grace has changed the world I'm living in, under the atoning blood, under the atoning blood of the Lamb, under the atoning blood of the Lamb, safely I am hiding, constantly abiding, committed 
unto him against that day. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know who I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. Because of the assurance and confidence that we have in Christ, we can have wonderful peace, wonderful peace. Mm -hmm. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight, Rolls a melody sweeter than the song. In celestial light, strains it unceasingly falls. O'er my soul, I can infinite call. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. billows of love. What a treasure I have in this wonderful peace, buried deep in the heart of my soul. So secure that no power can mine it away, while the years of eternity roll. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. I am resting tonight in this wonderful peace, resting sweetly in Jesus' control, for I'm kept from all danger by night and by day, and His glory is flooding my soul. Peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. billows of love. Ought I think that I rise to that city of peace, where the author of peace I shall see. That one strain of the song which the ransom will sing, in that heavenly kingdom shall be. Wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. All soul, are you here without comfort or rest? Marching down the rough pathway of time. Make Jesus your friend ere the shadows grow dark. Oh, accept this sweet peace so sublime. Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. Sweet home. Let us pray at this.
this time. Father, thank you for the peace that you give. Thank you for that wonderful, sweet peace. The rest for our souls that we can find in Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at our scripture this evening, we're going to look at the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. And we're going to look at a life at rest. A life at rest. We live in a stressful world. That may be a gross understatement. I speak to you now knowing that many of you are just stressed out. The greatest source of stress right now, of course, comes from this coronavirus pandemic that we are going through. I have talked to some of you have, who have shared a little bit about how overwhelmed with stress you are. There's stress in general just knowing that the silent killer is, is claiming lives uh, throughout the world. But then there's the stress of trying to make sure that the kids at home are getting a good education. There's stress from bringing your work to the home place and trying to get set up to work from home. There is stress as we hear more and more news of death. We hear more and more political controversies and rumors. There's some benefit when people share how many positive results there are, how many deaths, the myriads of advice about how to stay healthy in this dangerous time. Yet I understand, for many, the constant barrage of negative news, conflicting stories, controversy, and more is just overwhelming. It's enough to make anyone just want to get away. The problem is, in a stay-at-home world, it is difficult to find any place that you can get away from it all. Even before this pandemic, there was much in the world to cause stress. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes and hurricanes. There was stress at home, as conflict within the family seems inevitable. There was stress on the road, as rush hour seemed to be getting more and more hectic. There was stress at work. We live in a dog-eat-dog -dog world where the nice guy uh, finishes last, or loses his job. Often there was even stress at, at church, often over little quibbles and controversies that really were not necessary. Quite frankly, however, many have felt stress within. Difficulty sleeping, food that seems tasteless, dissatisfaction with life, and more. Many were and even are at unease merely with themselves. While the circumstances of our modern lives today are different uh, from what causes us stress and anxiety are different than that of the demon-possessed man in our text, we see similarities between his situation and ours. Our text tells us that Jesus had landed on the southeastern shore of the Sea of Galilee. In this mountainous region was a demon-possessed man that according to verse 5, wandered about night and day among the tombs and in the mountains, crying out. Constantly this man was shrieking, crying, wailing, moaning, howling. Why? He had no peace, no rest. Notice that this man had no peace with God. Verse 2 says, And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Demons are fallen angels condemned to eternity without God. One day soon they will be judged along with their master, the prince of evil. Yet while their judgment is future, even now they experience bitter agony because they rejected God. And so this man filled with demons had no peace with God. Instead, the spirits within him tormented his spirit. But not only did, they have, did he have no peace with God, he also had no peace with his fellow men. Verses 3 and 4. 
who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Can you imagine what life was like for this man? His angry, erratic, anti-social behavior would not allow him to live in peace with others. Surely any slight offense must have set him off into a murderous rage. Polite society sought to constrain him and cage him, but he could not be held down. Breaking the chains, he ran away from society into a self-imposed solitary confinement. Yes, even though he lived in freedom out in the wild, all alone, he was caught in the cruelest of prisons. You see, not only did this man not have peace with God or his fellow man, he also had no peace with himself. Verse 5, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Self-harm, cutting oneself. This is a destructive behavior seen in many people today, especially young people. And yet this modern antisocial behavior is ancient. This demon-possessed man suffered like many people do today. Emotionally disturbed, psychologically twisted, hurting oneself seems to give a sense of temporary relief. Yes, this man was demon-possessed, and so he had no peace with God, fellow man, or within himself. Yet the truth is that without Christ, we also can never experience full, restful peace. As long as we have sin in our lives, we are at odds with God. Our sin separates us from God. We are the enemy of God. Our sin condemns us to eternity in hell without God. Sin also separates us from our fellow man. We see the separation from the very beginning. Adam and Eve, uh, husband and wife, suddenly became aware of their nakedness, and yet they were ashamed in each other's presence, even though no one else was around. Then when God held them accountable for their sin, Adam blamed Eve who blamed the serpent. Then sometime later on, jealousy and anger led Cain to murder his brother. Sin sets us at odds with one another. Sin creates barriers and divisions. Sin creates unease within ourselves. Disease. Take that word apart. What do you get? Dis-ease. Sin creates an unwholeness within us. Guilt, regret for the past, shame, fear of being found out, and more cause us to be uneasy with ourselves. Without Christ, we can have no real peace, no rest. But Jesus said in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Notice the position of the man once he was delivered from the demons in verse 15. While before this man was constantly roaming the tombs and mountains, now in the presence of Jesus, he was sitting. Verse 15. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. As we look at this man delivered from demons, we see that he was resting spiritually. The townspeople came to Jesus after the reports of the pig farmers and right there beside Jesus sat this man. Before Jesus came, nobody could sit next to this man. This man probably could not sit for long. 
This man could not stand the presence of people, nor could the people stand or sit around him. He was too much at war with himself and at war with the world. But now in the presence of God, he sat quietly. Notice also that this man was now resting physically. Can you imagine how physically worn out this man must have been? The demons at war within him would not allow him to rest. Surely he must have lived an exhausting life. But now he could sit. He could rest. His body was at peace. His body was restored. Furthermore, notice that this man was resting mentally. Our text says he was in his right mind. In previous encounters with this man, surely the townspeople at times must have thought that, you know, he was sane. He did make sense. Momentarily, he, he made sense as he spoke and acted. But then very quickly, he demonstrated that something was off. The words he spoke suddenly made no sense. He acted erratically. Something was not right. But now everything was right. You see, Christ's presence brings life to a world of death. Before Christ came to this man, he had no peace with God, with fellow men, with himself. But now, now that Christ had come into his life, he was restored. He experienced rest physically, spiritually, mentally. Once this man had wandered in places of death and isolation, now he knew what true life was about. Yes, Christ's presence brings life to a world of death. You know the story. The townspeople were afraid of Jesus' power. They wanted Jesus to leave. This cleansed man wanted to go with Jesus. In fact, he even prayed that he might be with him. He was begging. To go with Jesus. But for various reasons, Jesus told the man to go back home. When I first began to look at the scripture, this is what caught my eye. I see a bit of a parallel between this man and us today. Just like this man wanted to stay in the immediate presence of Jesus, so we believers want to meet with Jesus in our sanctuary, the church building. But Jesus told the man to go home and tell his friends what God had done for him. In this time of COVID-19, we have had to go home and stay home. Yet I believe Christ's command for this man is the same for us. We should be sharing the life that Christ gives. Verse 20, And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis, how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. Someone has written, no doubt this once demonized man was disappointed initially, but he realized he must keep the directive of his deliverer and thus return to speak to his community. His obedience brought to fruition in church history, which records the group of believers that began to surface in that region. The church had a powerful expression in that area, most likely birthed by the man Jesus sent home. Because Jesus sent him home, a powerful move of God was begun. Follower of Jesus, are you discouraged today? Does your heart feel heavy, stressed, lonely, longing for the fellowship of God's people. Yes, we hope that we will be able to regather with God's people very soon. But know this, even though God's will may be different for us than we would prefer, if we live faithfully for Him, if we share the good news with everyone we can, God will work powerfully through us, bringing life to a world of death. Yes, even though we may stay at home as part of a death culture, COVID-19, 
because Christ is with us, because Christ is in us, we can have life and that abundantly. So our only logical response is to share this life with others. Christ's presence brings life to a world of death. He can change a person from shrieking with pain to sitting contentedly, to sharing joyfully how great and wonderful things God has done. I know that many of you who are listening to me speak right now. You recognize, you believe this truth, that true rest and peace only come by knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Yet I know how easy it is to accept this truth but not to really practice it in our lives. And so now I am speaking to the one who knows so much about scripture. You know many biblical facts, you know who Jesus is, but you do not know Jesus himself. You do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're still trying to live life by your own terms. You're trying to incorporate biblical teachings that you like and that makes sense to you, that you hope will make your life work, but you have not truly accepted Christ as the boss of your life. Your need is not to take bits and pieces of what Jesus might offer into your life. Rather, your need is to surrender all to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If you will truly trust Jesus to be your Savior and your Lord, then you can experience the peace and the rest Jesus can only give you. I'm also addressing the believer right now who has trusted in Jesus as Savior and Lord. But over time, you've tried to take more and more upon yourself. You feel like that if you don't do this or don't do that, everything will fall apart. Christ wants to give you rest. Instead of striving to live for Jesus by your own power, Jesus offers you his strength. Will you rest in his power? I invite you to rest. You can be at peace with God. You can be at peace with others. You can be at peace with self. You can have rest spiritually, physically, mentally, will you accept his rest? Let us pray. Father, for the one who is listening right now, they know a lot about you. They can quote Bible verses and say so many spiritual facts. But Lord, they have never truly entrusted you with their life. I pray, Lord, that they would recognize that only you can truly give them the peace and rest they are longing for. I pray, Lord, that they right now would just ask you to take over the steering wheel of their life and that they would follow you and serve you and obey your word and your will. Father, we also pray for the believer who uh, loves you and serves you. But Lord, they're taking more and more upon themselves and they're forgetting to rest in you and in your strength. They're trying to do it all on their own, by their own power. I pray, Lord, that you would give them peace, give them rest. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Having accepted the rest that only Jesus can give you, I now challenge you, tell someone else about God's grace. Share the good news that being right with God is not about how good we are or what good works we might have done. Share the good news that God loves us so much that he took the first step in coming to us. He took the full step. He died in our place. And he takes the final step in redeeming us and making us right with him. Share the good news to a world filled with anxiety, 
stress, and doubt. Conflict. Jesus gives peace to the weary soul. We invite you at this time to join us in Zoom as we discuss the scripture and pray together. God bless.